The 40th anniversary of the Australian Law Reform Commission is a suitable time to look back on what has been accomplished during those years, and particularly what has been distinctive about the work of the ALRC. From the very beginning, the ALRC made a mark through its innovative methodology. Uh, it opened up to the public the process of law reform in ways that had not been done previously, and in ways that in fact have become standard uh, throughout the world, or at least in many countries in the world. The ALRC's methodology has been very public from the beginning. Uh, it was pioneered by its first president, Michael Kirby, and maintained since then. It involves the publication of issues papers and discussion papers and seeking public submissions on them. But it also involves public hearings, uh, moving around the country and enabling people in front of the media to express their views uh, and particularly to indicate their experiences of the law in the past and their aspirations for how the law will develop in the future. This public process of law reform has opened up the law itself to much greater scrutiny by the community and a greater sense of community ownership um, of legal changes. In fact, it's smoothed the way for law reform in many sensitive, even controversial areas during the course of the ALRC's 40 years. By bringing in the public, the ALRC has also been able to build up a constituency for change. So many law reform efforts from so many institutions have been unsuccessful in the past, or, or at least ineffective, in that though they have pointed to necessary areas of legal improvement, they have failed to be incorporated into the actual process of legislation. So the good work of many institutions has come to naught when it comes to actually changing the law itself. By this public process, the ALRC has successfully built support for law reform, both amongst those who are most expert in the areas in which it inquires and amongst the broader community too. And so the innovative methodology has been a major contribution of the ALRC to the law reform effort in this country and internationally. The ALRC has also always cut its mark uh, in the whole area, the whole gamut of law, from the most technical to the most socially oriented. And this too, I think, is a particular distinction that it has. Um, it has not shied away from doing technical work. Uh, I recall during my years um, on the Commission, uh, we did work on personal property security law and collective investments law. Um, at the same time, the ALRC has always had a very strong social agenda. Uh, again, referring to my own time at the Commission, we did work on women's equality before the law and children in the law. Being able to cover such a wide gamut of law has meant that the expertise of the ALRC and its innovative methodology have been open to so many sectors of the law and so many parts of the community. The challenge for the next 40 years um, continues to be the challenge of implementation. Uh, this has certainly been a great demand in the 40 years gone by and will continue. The methodology, as I have said, ensures the best possible prospects for implementation of ALRC recommendations but it needs to follow up, as it has in the past, to ensure that governments and parliaments take seriously the work that it does. I think the ALRC has been extraordinarily successful in achieving a high rate of implementation. That has been one of its characteristics as a standing law reform body. Uh, it is not established for the single purpose of a single inquiry and then goes away, but it stays around to follow up on its work, and it has done so very successfully. Over the next 40 years, it needs to continue that. Um, it needs to continue the methodology that it has pioneered in the past, and it needs to continue to make a contribution through its expertise and through its openness to the community to the law reform effort.